is a battlefield. <laughs> Uh, my own life is a battlefield and that I'm, I'm constantly, constantly fighting, fighting, fighting against all of the, the evils of the world, fighting against all the, the problems that arise in my life, church, it, it, gets, it gets difficult sometimes, but, but you got to keep on fighting and you got to keep on being a hard fighting soldier and if God be for us, church, who can be? against us. If God is on your side, you don't have to worry. That's right. You don't have to worry about all the, the, the troubles that are going to come your way. You don't have to, to worry about all the troubles that are going to happen in the future. Because God will see you through, church. God will see you through. And one of, the, one of the weapons that we have, church, one of the weapons that we have is prayer. And, and prayer is, is a weapon that sometimes we neglect. Yeah. Church. Sometimes yeah. we, we forget yeah. that we can ask an all-powerful being for the things that we need. Yeah. And that if it be his will, he will grant them to you. How can we how can we neglect the fact that, that we can we can close our eyes and, and pray to a person that can do anything? Easier than lifting up one finger. There's nothing too hard for the Lord to do. We ought to pray. We ought to pray, and that's what I want to talk about today. Church prayer changes things. Never forget that prayer changes things. And men ought always to pray. And 1 Thessalonians 5:17 says, pray without ceasing. That means all the time. That means every single waking moment of the day, you ought to be thinking about God. You ought to be giving your requests to him. You ought to be telling him, help me in this situation. Does that mean that you can't go to work? You, it says pray without ceasing, so I got to pray all day. That means I can't do anything but pray. No, no, what that means is, is that your mind is essentially focused on talking to God all the time. doesn't matter what you're doing, you can be talking to the Lord. That mindset of, of keeping God first is what keeps us on the straight and narrow. Let's look at uh, what the scripture reading from today, uh, and starting at Philippians chapter 4 and at verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. And it says, be careful for nothing. Or it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now, now let's, we, we really got to look at this because it says, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. See, see, this is why every single time you hear me pray, I always thank God first before I ask for anything. I always thank God first for what he's given me. I thank God first for, for where he's brought me from. I thank God first for, for waking me up in the morning. I thank God first for keeping me safe on yesterday before I ask him for anything. It says supplication with thanksgiving. What, is that? what does that mean, church? It means be thankful for what you got before you ask for something else. With supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So, so God wants to hear from us. You know, I used to be really foolish with my, with my prayer life, church. I used to think that, that I was bothering God. When I, when I would pray all the time and, and, and ask him for everything, I, I used, to, I used to, to, to think that I was bothering God like I was a pest. But but the scripture clearly says, let your requests be made known unto God. God wants to hear from you. 
He wants you to be praying. Why did he say pray without ceasing if he gets tired of you praying to him? Come on, Christian. I was foolish in my thinking. I needed to read the scriptures again. And I did. And I changed my prayer life. I started praying more. I started continuously thinking about God in my every situation while I'm at work, thinking about whether I'm doing the right thing, whether I'm staying on the straight and narrow, asking him to help me get through hard, difficult situations as they arise. It doesn't take much to say a prayer. You can say it in your head. You can say it in your head. You don't have to close your eyes and get on your knees. You don't have to, to, to fold your hands. You could just say a prayer in your head quickly. That's what he's asking for when he says pray without ceasing. Now let's look at, at um, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now here's an example of a woman praying to God. And here's an example of her getting what she desired. And also an example of, of how we can pray today. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, starting at verse 1, it says, Now there was a certain man of Ramathan, Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jerome, the son of Elu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. But, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. She couldn't have any children. And that's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. I know there's some people going through that today. They're trying to have kids and, and they can't. That's why, that's why I thank God for the kids that I have. Thank God for the kids that I have. Because some people can't have children. It says, but the Lord shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked, provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And, and as he did so, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so Hannah to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore wept, and did not eat. And then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid. She said, Lord, if you would please consider your servant, Lord. Consider your servant and look, look at my situation. See what I'm going through. She said, if you will look on your handmaid and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child. If you do this for me, Lord, she said, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Now this church is the example in the Bible that we can go to to show that it's all right to pray in your head. You don't have to say the actual words in your prayer. You can pray your prayer 
in your hand. Because Hannah did so here. It says, she spake in her heart. This is called audiation. Only, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she, she was drunk. Because, because she, she was speaking, but she was moving her lips, but nothing was coming out. Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, how long will thou be drunken? How long are you going to be drunk, woman? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, my lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. Yes. I have not drunk neither wine nor strong drink but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Yes. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. He's, she's saying, I'm not one of those heathen that, that drink and get drunk. Count not your, your handmaid for the daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Roma. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife. And the Lord remembered her. Mm -hmm. Hannah said, Lord, remember me. And God remembered her. And wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived. Yes. And she bare the son. God answered Hannah's prayer. And they called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. See, we have to tell the Lord what we want. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will open unto you. We have to go seeking for the things that we want. We have to do something about it. Closed mouths don't get fed, church. Closed mouths don't get fed. That goes for prayer. That goes for life in general. If you don't ask, why would somebody help you? If you don't ask for help, why would they help you? Ask, and it shall be given. You seek, and you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That's Matthew 7, 7. We have to tell the Lord what we want. Back, back in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And keep on asking. Keep asking the Lord. He doesn't get tired of hearing you ask him. I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to prove that to you. Let's look at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 1. Keep on asking God for your requests. Keep on asking. Show him that you're serious about it. That you really, really need it. In Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 1. And this is Jesus, and it says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. Why, why did he speak this parable? It says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. What does that tell you? This is coming from Jesus. He spoke this parable because he wants you to keep on praying and don't faint. Keep on asking. Believe that you'll get it. It says, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God. So this, this judge is not, not a God-fearing man. This judge is, is, is not a, a, a good or kind man. But look at what happened. He said, the judge feared not God, neither regarded man. He didn't, he didn't like God or men. And it says, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of mine adversary. Yeah. Don't we feel like that sometimes? Sometimes people, people do us dead wrong. 
People do us dead wrong. And, and we read the scripture, we, we know that vengeance belongs to the Lord, but sometimes we don't want to wait for God. Sometimes we want to take vengeance into our own hands. But you got to wait. You have to wait. So she asked this, this judge that neither regarded man or God, she asked him, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, because he, he don't care nothing about, about her. <laughs> he don't care nothing about her. He wouldn't do it. Why, why should I do this for you? Who are you? He would not do it for a while, but, but afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, because she keep on asking, Marlon, over and over and over and over again, getting on my last nerve. Bad, yeah. oh, because because she done, she done messed up every single nerve in my body, well. I will avenge her, he said. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Tired. He got tired of her asking him, over and over and over again. Yes. So he said, I need to do something about this woman so she'll be quiet. <laughs> Mercy Lord. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Okay. Pay attention to this because if an unjust man, a person that doesn't care nothing about you or God, will grant your request because you keep on bothering him, shall not God avenge his own elect, yes. which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Won't a just God grant your request if an unjust man will grant this woman's request? God will grant your request. He doesn't get tired of you asking him. He doesn't get tired of you praying to him. He doesn't get tired of, of you asking for help. As a matter of fact, he wants you to ask him. He wants you to ask him. And you know, sometimes you have to pray for something all night long. And Jesus did in Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Jesus is our example. Yes, he is. He is our example. All night he long. went up to that mountain and he prayed all night, all night long. And church, when you pray, when you pray, don't put on a show. Please don't put on a show. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a, a it's not showtime when you when you pray. It's not to, to entertain your, your audience with, with the words that you're saying. Do it with a pure heart. Yeah. With with pure intentions. And do it like God said to do it. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter six and verse starting at verse six. Let's see how how, how God taught us to pray. Let's see how God taught us to pray. So once again, when you're when you're praying, it's it's not it's not a show. It's not about the the words that you say. It doesn't have to be a, a beautiful, uh, a heartfelt, um, um, uh, entertaining prayer. It just has to be pure. It you just have to to mean the words that you say, and your heart has to be pure when you say it. And Matthew chapter six, starting at verse six, it says, "But thou, when thou prayest." Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Does that mean that every single prayer I, I pray, I have to be hidden somewhere? I can't pray out in public. That's not what that means. What he's saying is that don't put on a show. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a show. It's not about entertaining man. Because if you're trying to entertain man, that's all you're going to do. Your prayer ain't no good. If you're trying to entertain man with your prayer, it ain't no good. You have to be pure when you say you have to really mean what you say. It's not about entertaining folks. It's about being sincere. 
church. So he says, the father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions. Now, now that's, that's vain repetitions because sometimes when you're praying all night about something, you might keep on saying the same thing over and over again. But what he's talking about is the vain repetitions that the Pharisees used to do. They used to go out in the streets and, yeah. and, and pray in front of everybody and say all these things over and over again, trying to put on a show for the people. And it's sad because they're doing that in the churches today. Putting on a show. One of, one of, my, one of my co-workers told me, it was like, they asked me about what I do in the church, and I said, you know, I'm a song leader, and, you know, I, I preach sometimes, and, and she was like, she was like, I, she was like, you lead prayer? I was like, yeah. She was like, when you lead prayer, do you, do you pray, do you pray short, or do you pray a long time? Because, you know, at my church, they, they, they kind of wild out, but you're praying for, for 30 minutes straight. I said, what? 30 minutes? I'll be speaking about that time. <laughs> 30 minutes. I ain't lying. Praying for 30 minutes. I said, I said, no, bro. No, I don't. We, we like to keep things decent and in order. Yes. If, if there's a lot of requests, then I try to I try to pray for every single request that was made. That might take a little longer, but I try to keep it quick and, and to the point. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Ooh. Of praying, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And so that's what he's talking about with with vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask them. See, God already knows what you need, and after this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, yeah. which art in heaven. So the first thing you have to do is you have to acknowledge that you're speaking to God the Father. So that's why you always open your prayer with Father God or Dear Heavenly Father or um, to, the, to the Most High, to the Most High God. You can call him by any of his, any of his names. But you have to acknowledge that you're speaking to God. Our Father which are in heaven. The Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, Emmanuel, uh, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah. All of these are names that are that a God is called in the Bible. Not, not man-made names. In the Bible, God has called these things. So we open up our prayer by acknowledging who we're speaking to. Our Father, which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Acknowledge who you're speaking to and start off by praising his name. Start off by telling God you're amazing. Open up your prayer saying who you're speaking to and then give him the praise that he's always due. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom has come already. The church has been established. Thy kingdom spread. So first we acknowledge who we're talking to. Then we give him praise. Then we talk about the thing that's most important, which is the spread of the gospel. Thy kingdom spread. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And after you do that, then you should start with your request. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Always praying and asking the Lord for, to forgive you for your sins. Because sometimes you can sin and you don't even know. Yes. <laughs> Always asking God to forgive us for our sins as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Lord. Guide us, direct our steps that we, that we stay away from the devil's snares. That we avoid all of Satan's temptations. That we, that we are on the path of righteousness. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Make our life easier to be your will. For thine is the kingdom, 
What do you end with? For thine is the kingdom, praise, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So you have to believe that God will grant your request. When you pray, you have to believe. If you don't believe that God will grant your request, it, it, it ain't, it ain't going to do you no good. In Matthew chapter 21 and verse 21, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believe it. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe it. Having faith, you'll receive. Sometimes you just don't know what to say. So sometimes I just say, Lord have mercy. When I'm, when I'm on my knees and, and I don't know what to say and I'm praying at night, I, I just say, Lord have mercy upon me. Help me. And that's all right because in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 it says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh interception, intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Sometimes we don't know what to say, but the Spirit, the Spirit utters what we need for us. Amen. Amen. What we need. So it's all right if you, if you don't know what to say. Just, 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 say, just say, Lord, help me. Lord, have mercy. The Spirit will take care of the yeah, rest for you. And and yes, First Timothy will. chapter two verse eight it says, "I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting." Once again, without doubting, church, without your without the the doubt that we have, we have to believe that God will give us those things that we need. And also, this scripture teaches us a lot. He says, "I will therefore that men." Pray. Now, in the Bible, when it's talking about mankind, he'll say man in a singular form, which, which is also used as a plural form, used, uh, talking about mankind. But when he says men, he's talking about males specifically. So leading prayer, that's why, that's why men ought to lead prayer in the church. Because 1 Timothy chapter 2 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands and it's not just any man in order to have holy hands you have to be a member of the church Amen. i will therefore that men pray lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting so men lead prayer in the church i know some of y'all were, were at uh sister anderson's funeral and uh we were there in, in, yeah, in, a, yeah, I was. in a in a place where where denominational worship is is held and and uh the the, the lady there nice lady I, sh I shook her hand after um she was, she was very kind but she she led prayer in she front did. of our congregation yes, she did yes, she did and I'm sorry church but I sat there with my eyes open <laughs> me too because the Bible says. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. So, uh, she was, like I said, she was a nice and, and kind woman, but, but what she was doing was not scriptural. It just wasn't. So, so also, this part here where it says lifting up holy hands, some people think that, that when it says here lifting up holy hands, that means that, that people can, can wave their hands and, and raise the roof during church worship. They think that, that, they, can, that they, can, they, can, they can lift up their hands while we're singing and, and do some dance moves. Uh -huh. Because it says lift up with, with holy hands, but, but what he's talking about is, is a certain prayer posture. So why, where do we get this folding of hands from? Well, we get it from the scripture. Yes. Where it says lifting up holy hands. It's talking about praying. Lifting up holy hands in prayer. 
That's where we get this posture from. And where do we get the posture of bowing our heads from? If we look at Exodus chapter 34 and verse 8, it says, And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. He was worshiping God. Bowing your head is a form of worship towards God. So bowing your head and closing your eyes and, and lifting up your holy hands and folding them, that is the prayer posture. Do you have to do it that way every time? No. No. You can't because the Bible says pray without ceasing. How can you without ceasing hold your hands up like this all day every day? You can't. So you cannot pray like that all the time. So just to clear that up. Okay. In church, prayer changes things. Amen. Once again, prayer changes things. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. James chapter 5 and verse 14 says, Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Once again, the prayer of faith. Church, you got to believe. You have to believe what you're praying is going to come to pass. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Church, prayer is powerful. It's something that we have neglected. It's something that we do not do enough today. All the problems that we have, if we just take it to the Lord in prayer. All the problems that we go through, if we just tell God to, to help us out in our situation, we'd be better off. I don't know if you've, if you've uh, noticed this, but, but I have the days that I start off, that I start off in prayer are better days, church. The days that, that I, I'm in a rush and I forget to get on my knees and pray, it seems to be more chaotic that day. Don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. And you know, Jesus, Jesus prayed for you, church. Jesus prayed for you in, in John chapter 17. Yes. In John prayer. chapter 17, prayer. Jesus prayed for you. That entire chapter. Yes. We don't have time to go to yes. it today. But that entire oh, chapter, chapter he prayed for you. Oh, and his prayer was answered. Oh, yeah. Now church, when you pray sometimes your prayer might be hindered. It might not get to where it's going because of, of something that's going on in your life. Because we all know that the Lord heareth not sinners. In John chapter 9, verse 31, it says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. In Proverbs chapter 28, and verse 9, it says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So if you turn away from God, even your prayer can be an abomination. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 12, further evidence, it says, But go ye now unto my place, which is in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I do to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not, therefore will I do this unto thy house which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I give, give to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh, and I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. Don't pray for them, God said. Neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. God told these people, you done messed up. When I called for you, when I called for you to come out of your sinful ways and you ignored me, when I tried to, to get you out of your situation, you ignored me. 
So now when you call unto me, I'm going to know you too. He said, don't pray for these people. Don't even lift up a cry for them. Don't make intercession for them, for I will not hear you. That's, that's a shame in there. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, understand that it's not that God doesn't hear, because God hears everything. But what's happening is that their sin separates them from God. In Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. God hears everything. But what happens is, is your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. In, in Psalm chapter 66 and verse 17, it says, I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. See, what happens is, is that God hears your prayer. But if there is iniquity that is involved, it separates you from him and he turns your prayer away. That's what it says here in Psalms. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer. Meaning that in the earlier part of the verse, he said, if you have iniquity in your heart, then you'll turn it away. So sometimes our prayers are, are hindered by our own sin. And that's why Jesus instructed us in the Lord's Prayer to say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Always ask the Lord for forgiveness of your sins because sometimes you can sin and you don't even realize that you did. So ask the Lord for forgiveness. Ask the Lord from, for forgiveness. In Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 29 it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Make sure that you're right with God. Believe what you're praying, church. Don't grow weary of praying. Pray without ceasing. Keep on praying to God. Keep on asking him for what it is that you need. And he will grant your request, church. Church, this lesson is yours. If there's, if there's anybody here today that is not a member of the Lord's church, you can be today. And among a